Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today, and uh, I'm so grateful to have been asked to, uh, to give you the message this morning today on Mother's Day. I pray that you are enjoying your day as we, as we celebrate being here together, um, as we honor and lift up the, the Christian home, and as we remember especially how, how grateful we are for the mothers in our lives, uh, what, the, what motherhood has meant uh, to us in the past, and what it means to us now. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wanted to start my sermon off uh, by sharing a story with you. I think I've shared with a lot of you that I, I grew up in a Catholic school. Uh, I grew up Catholic, and I went to Catholic school, and... Uh, and as a result, there were, there were several nuns that had taught us. And there was one nun in particular uh, that we discovered early on when we first uh, were in her class that she was a nun that liked to talk a lot and tell stories. And we also learned that we could use this knowledge about her to our advantage if we wanted to get out of, uh, of taking a test or, or something. If you knew there was going to be a test or if there was, there was something that you didn't want to do in class, uh, one of the best questions that you could ask this nun in particular was something like, Sister Connie, what made you decide to be a nun? And that question, if you played your cards right, it could be gold because uh, you might be able to get a, a lot of mileage out of a question like that. You could get her talking, and then before you knew it, the bell would ring, and you had successfully gotten out of uh, a test that she wanted to assign that day. Best, best if it was a math test. These were some of the shameless but sometimes successful ways that we would get out of doing some of the work uh, that we, we were assigned in grade school. In the scripture that we heard this morning, we heard a story of Mary and Martha these were two sisters who had welcomed Jesus into their home as he and his disciples were passing through their town. So we heard in verses 39 and 40, she had a sister called Martha, Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all of the work by myself? Tell her to help me. I think by the world's standards, I think the difference between Martha and Mary is that Martha appears to be the hard worker. And she appears to be the good host, doing all of the food prep and the things that a good host would do when they have guests over. And then you have Mary, who's just sitting there, as my father would have said, like a bump on a log. She's sitting there, and, and, and she appears to be oblivious to Martha and all of the hard work that she's doing in preparing uh, a meal and preparing for their guests. How rude and inconsiderate Mary was being, you might think. You could almost picture a Facebook rant uh, today of uh, something like this going on where Martha gets on her Facebook and she says, we invited Jesus over and my sister, she didn't do anything to help me. 
And then you could just, just envision like the comment thread after uh, uh, somebody venting on Facebook about this situation. Mary, it would appear, was trying to stall and she was trying to get out of doing her part in helping prepare for their guests. What was Mary doing? Have you ever in your life had a situation where you saw something or you heard something and it just stopped you in your tracks? Maybe it was a performance you were watching on TV or maybe it was a song that you heard on the radio that was so relevant to you and to your life that you just stopped everything you were doing and you gave this, this thing your, your complete and undivided attention. Maybe it was the first time that you heard a song from your now favorite band, or maybe it was something that you saw for the first time um, on a hike or in nature, you know, going to Niagara Falls for the first time. It's spectacular, and it just captivates you, and it stops you in your tracks. Maybe you heard someone give a talk that really moved you, and it, and it opened your eyes to a new way of thinking. You just felt like you had stopped in your tracks and you needed to give this thing your full self. This is what happened to Mary this day as Jesus was teaching her about the most important things in our lives. He was teaching her about God, really teaching her about God and God's grace and God's love. Consider the context of the times. Women in those days, they weren't given the time of the day, let alone taught much of anything. It's also it's significant that Jesus visited these women and was willing to teach them about anything to do with spiritual matters. In that culture, many rabbis thought that teaching a woman was a waste of time. But Jesus took the time to, to be with these women, to enter their home, to reach out to them, to sit and to teach them. And in doing so, the value that God puts on every woman and on every person is, is significant and, and, and lifted up at this time. And through these women, especially Mary, Jesus teaches us a really critical lesson about the main priority that we need to hold on to in the midst of our busy lives. And that sitting at the feet of Jesus is the necessary thing. It's the good thing to do. So instead of being a slacker or a staller as, um, or as someone who's unwilling to do her part in helping Mary, or in helping Martha, Mary, she stopped in her tracks and she's compelled, compelled with her whole self to hear what Jesus was teaching her and what he had to say that day. I always found this story in the Bible an interesting one. It, it seems like, like a passing moment almost and, and, and something that could have been lost in in the busyness of the, the work that Jesus was doing and in his ministry. I believe that God's Holy Spirit had compelled Luke to include this, this uh, moment in his writings and in, the, and in his book because Jesus was teaching Martha the most important thing in this pa these passing moments. Jesus is teaching all of us in this story the most important thing that we can be doing with our lives. As a mom, I know I, I get trapped in feeling like I am doing my best job um, and I am, I am serving my family in the best way when I've prepared good meals or when the house is clean, or these days when the kids' schoolwork is done and done well and submitted on time, or when the kids are getting outside and they're getting some exercises. I have my list of things that are ideal 
uh, for me to, to do as a mom in order to feel like I'm serving my family well and I'm being a good mom. Notice the way that Jesus speaks to Martha after she complains about her slacker sister to him. He says to her in, in verses 41 to 42, he says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. When someone says your name twice, as Jesus does here, it's often a way to get someone's attention first and then to reassure them, Martha, Jesus says, Martha, listen to me. He may have said her name twice to help her stop running around for one second. And he says her name again. And everything that's implied in this could perhaps have meant, Martha, Martha, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what you're doing. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for everything. But listen to this. This is really important. Martha was distracted with all of her preparations. She was worried and bothered by so many things. There were all of these urgent demands of getting, getting a meal prepared and setting the table and, and baking bread, which I can't even imagine what the process was 2,000 years ago to, to bake bread or, or roasting meat or fixing vegetables or whatever, whatever it was that they served at that time, coordinating everything so that it all got done and got done at the same time. And we don't know. We don't know if Jesus was alone or if the whole group, he and the 12, were with them. If they were, this was a big production. But even if they weren't, there were a lot of things that she needed to do, and they were important, and, and they were pretty urgent. And all of these things, Jesus recognized, were important. But what he was saying was that there is only one thing that is, that is truly, truly important. And this is to be fed by God first. To be filled by God first. And then go serve as God leads us to serve. As Jesus was speaking to Mary, she became aware of her hunger for God and for God's presence. And, and Jesus' teaching was filling this need for her. Her eyes were opening. Her spirit was, was, was realizing, like, this is what I need. Martha remained trapped in the place where we all find ourselves trapped, often trying to fill our spiritual emptiness with the wants and the worries and the cares of this world. We're in a time right now where a lot of our busyness, much of our busy, busyness has been kind of stripped away from us. We're in a moment at this time where Jesus, Jesus is waiting at our doorsteps and asking to come in so that we can sit at his feet and be fed in our souls. And just like Martha, Jesus is speaking our names he might be speaking your name now, over and over, gently, and, and urging you, sit with me, pray with me. When was the last time that you felt stopped in your tracks as you've read the words that Jesus spoke? Because his words, they're powerful, they're, they're, they're life-giving, and they can change your life. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 3, the Bible says, He, God, humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither of you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus 
quoted this scripture during his time with us and in his ministry. Friends, I want to encourage you now, today, as we remember all that God has blessed us with, as we're gathered together with our families and giving thanks to God for these blessings. And during this time where we don't, we don't have much of a choice but to, to put things aside and get centered, I urge you to let the words and the teachings of Jesus fill you now and give you what you need at this time more than ever. Be amazed at Jesus' love for you as you sit at his feet and as you sit at his feet often. Let these good things that God longs to give you give you strength, give you strength for the days ahead and to give you the purpose and the strength as you go on to love the people that God has blessed in your lives. Because then God can fill you with what he wants to give you. And then you can truly serve and you can truly love as God has called us to love. Amen.